Good afternoon, Hereford, Butler, Parkton, Jacksonville, Jarrettsville, Point Phoenix, Phoenix, yeah. Point Surrounding. Um, welcome back. Uh, thank you guys um, so much for tuning in to the um, videos that we've done before and um, for all the people who have told us how we could do it better. So um, just to make certain that we completely understand, we do not actually have a television show going on here. This is just two people, like grandmother-ish age and you know middle age here, just trying to get some information out. We're not uh, Yoda and Kathy Lee. Um, but I do appreciate the help. And um, I liked when the person said, you should get the cameras a little closer. The camera is a phone. I mean, this is just local here, guys. All right. So anyway, thank you all very much. And really yes. do appreciate the help because I do think some of the ideas were really, really smart. Um, so just to run down, uh, we're going to we're gonna heavy load up in the front with some important information that has changed since our last broadcast. And then we're going to take it easy a little bit toward the end. And if you'd like to continue to watch, we'd love it if you would. But And we'll talk about um, how to make an orange crush. We'll talk about the new videos and books that are outside. We'll talk, do some gardening things and um, everything else. But let's first run through our local news, okay? Yes. And our local restaurants. So um, there are a lot of people that wrote in about Roma's in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville. In Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people were really, really complimentary about them and said to please mention them. Great pizza. Great pizza. Awesome. Okay. Friedland Crab and Seafood. Um, unbelievable post that they put out about um, asking people to come forward if they needed food or were hungry and that they would be happy to assist in any way. They would make um, pick up lunches for children. I mean, it was really one of the most sincere and genuine things I have ever read and good for them. Everybody should support them as much as possible. Um, prices in Sparks, Rosetta Beef, Weinrich Cattle Company, the uh, Deli at Growls, just still just terrific <coughs> stuff. Did you just sneeze into your hands? I did. Okay, I there we go. Cough. Right there. <laughs> right there. Don't sneeze into your hands. That's, <gasps> yeah, exactly. Do you wanna start again? <laughs> Let's just push on. Don't sneeze into your hands. Okay. Um, <laughs> even the people who know not to do it, do it. That's why everybody has to be so careful. Um, Woodfire Kitchen um, from Pickup. Still the great, wonderful pizzas and tuna and doing a great job. Michael's Pizza, The Peppered Pig, Family Farms, The Filling Station, Dough Run, um, Filler Up, The Watering Hole Pub, um, and... We've also got the Texas Roadhouse, which has got a terrific uh, family. In fact, they're really trying to keep their workers working. And so they've got dinners for four, and they've got chicken, pulled pork, steaks, uh, you name it. And they're in there pushing it out. You pick salads and sides, and the prices are incredibly reasonable. So please do take advantage of Texas Roadhouse in Hunt Valley for um, anybody that's trying to feed your family. And um, we've also got Fresh Eggs at 15800 Carroll Road and Springfield Farm on Yoho Road in Sparks has got chicken, eggs, pork, beef, and turkey. So no one is going to go hungry during this time. Um, if for some reason you are in the situation where money is tight, and I don't know who wouldn't be in that situation, um, there are places that you can go. The Hereford Food um, kitchen in Hereford. Number one, it needs donations. Number two, you can go there. They are doing um, food for people that need it and require it, and um, it's it's terrific. Um, there are pickups from Baltimore County at the Hereford Senior Center. They could also use some volunteers and help there. And um, we've got another one somewhere here in my notes, the Southern York Food Pantry. Okay, and Southern York Food Pantry, by the way, does need some brown bags so they can put groceries in for distribution to the families that they take groceries to. If anybody has any, if, if you're one of those people that collect your brown bags from the store, they could really use them. And um, I'm sure if you just leave them outside, that would be terrific. Good, yeah. Anything you want to? No, I think you covered it all. Am I just keep, do I just keep going? Yes, you do. Okay, so... 
the one thing that I have found in the last couple of days is talking to neighbors, talking to people in the store, talking to friends. Um, people are very confused as to what the COVID virus is. All right, so I'm just gonna do, and you can explain this to your kids, and a very good way to do this is to use an egg, okay? This is the COVID virus in this example. It is very fragile inside, but it has a very strong protective fat layer over it that protects it and keeps it viable. It is a protein molecule, okay? It is not a living organism. It's a protein molecule like DNA. And what it does is when it's airborne, it attacks the areas of your body that make mucus, your nose, inside your mouth. That's how you get it, okay? If you want to break this thing down and you want to kill it and you want to be safe from it, you destroy the protective layer outside, okay? It's as simple as that and I'm going to go through exactly how you do it. Normally, this little puppy is gonna die on its own, and it's gonna die on its own in different ways and over different times. It dies faster when it's warm or hot, which is why we use as warm a water as we can when we wash our hands. It'll stay alive on fabric for three hours. It'll stay alive on copper and wood for four hours. It'll stay alive on a cardboard for 24 hours, metal for 42, and plastic for 72. What does that tell us as caregivers and people taking care of our homes? It tells us that we're pretty good on clothing unless we're directly with it. Cardboard, everybody's ordering everything from Amazon, Amazon Prime. Get a package, put it aside for 24 hours, open it up the next day. Okay, you're gonna be a idea. lot safer doing that, okay? Plastic is the scary one because there's plastic everywhere, especially on toys, playground equipment, um, the handles of shopping carts. Um, plastic is the one that you want to continue to be wiping down and cleaning off. So when there's plastic in your home, um, you know, it's the light switches and doorknobs and the thing you open the refrigerator with and the oven, all those areas that we all just touch naturally and don't think about, that's where you want to disinfect and, and um, when, clean and with as much as you possibly can. Okay, so what breaks down the fat layer of this soap? Soap, alcohol will work if it's over 65%. That means Tito's, no. Everclear, yes. Peroxide works, but it comes with a downside because peroxide will dry out skin and then it makes skin not as protected as it should be. Oh. This COVID virus will not go through healthy skin. You cannot catch it through your arm or your hand or anything like that. You can only catch it in the areas of your body that produce mucus, which is why masks are important to healthcare workers. Also bleach, bleach works. Five parts water to one part bleach works. If you're cleaning your house, if you're disinfecting your car, if you are spraying your doorknobs, use bleach. Don't use a bactericide. Bactericides don't work. That means all those little disinfectant wipes and everything else. There's, it's wonderful because you're not going to catch something else. It'll, it'll kill a bacteria. But it's not a bacteria, so it won't kill it. You have to use what actually works. So once again, alcohol over 65%. And uh, an alcohol over 65% is Listerine. If you have Listerine and you need to wash your hands quickly, if you're exposed to somebody or something, Listerine. Okay, soap is the best, peroxide, bleach. Keep your skin moisturized and learn to wash your hands. So as I do this for 20 seconds and I am cleaning my hands, what do I need the soap to do? I need the soap to foam. 
the soap doesn't work unless it's foamy. So I keep going on. I can sing happy birthday. I can sing God bless America. I can sing anything and everything that I want. And if I'm a mother or a caregiver or I've got somebody in my house that is immune suppressant, I'm going to cut my nails because things can hide under your nails. So the next time anybody wants to do something really safe for themselves, cut your nails. Now we're not going to sit here while I cut all my nails, but you get the idea. If I'm willing to do this, I am protecting not only myself, but you. Because I'm going to be handing over money. I'm going to be handing over food. I might be volunteering at Johns Hopkins, putting together PPE things and four-hour shifts that they're now letting you sign up for that you can go help them. And in all of that, I want to keep everybody safe. And it's in order to... And a postscript to what I was saying about, um, about breaking down that fat protective layer of the COVID-19 uh, protein molecule is one of the things that really does work, and I would highly recommend this to anybody who lives in a situation where they are immune deficient. If you've had chemotherapy, if you've had hepatitis, any of those things that break down your immune system, Think about buying a UV light. UV light is showing an enormous effect on this fat layer um, surrounding the virus. And so um, if you are forced to reuse masks, a UV light will break down those proteins faster. Um, if you are someplace where you feel that you have to rewear clothes or whatever, a UV light is great. Oh, that's um, a great idea. If you live in a house with somebody who is undergoing chemotherapy or something else, the, those UV lights will break down um, the fat layers that surround these molecules faster. So that's just a little something. And I want to thank Johns Hopkins University who gave us the information to pass on to you today about um, the COVID-19 um, virus and how it's structured and what they know and the lengths of time that, it, that these things can survive. Um, they put out something for their workers and their families, um, and this is the information that was in it, and we will be posting all of that on our Facebook page at Rapscallion's Shop Home Decor. Is it? I believe it's Rapscallion's Home Decor on Facebook, okay. um, or Rapscallion Shop. I'm never quite sure. You can go to rapscallionshop.com, and there's a takes you right to our Facebook page. Okay. So thank you all very much. So I had a friend that needed some help moving some items and I kind of put them off for a little bit and decided, well, now is as good a time as any because I have some free time in my schedule and he's always been a very good friend. So we loaded up my truck with some of his things and drove down to his home and as we're driving, he tells me that he has the COVID, or he had the COVID-19 virus, but that he's fine now which was very scary and I didn't really understand. I immediately got very mad at him because I didn't, I think he should have told me long before we started the trip because yeah. I never would have done it. Um, and I didn't know at all how to handle the situation. He swore he was better. He swore that he was fine and he was allowed to walk around. But then when I talked to him about dates to try and find out a timeline, none of it really made sense. And I, I don't think he had it. I think he was just saying it maybe as a joke or so I'm, I'm not sure. You were in a car with him. We were in a car. Okay. And one of the more dangerous areas are, are the air conditioning and heating systems in our cars because they will continually surface and, and resurface that air. So you definitely would want to get in there and turn on that heat or air, if you had any of that on. No, we didn't. Okay. Well then. You're good thing you got to clean out your car because you, you, you don't know if the guy had it or not. Right. So when I got home, my husband put a sheet and some clean socks out in the garage. I took off all of my clothes. I put those all in a bag so I could wash them with detergent on very high heat and dry them thoroughly to make sure they're completely dry in the dryer. Perfect. And then I wrapped myself in the sheet, went straight upstairs and took a long, very soapy, very sudsy shower. Yep. 
That's, a, that's the best you can do. And you're not going to feel better until five days have gone by and you know that you don't have any um, symptoms of anything. But it's, you know, what a completely, I mean, first of all, I, I, I think the guy was a bit of a braggart in a, in a, because none of the stuff that he came back with, like when he had a test and had some tests from Singapore and it was super secret and all this stuff, it's a little delusional. But still, you panicked when when he said it to you. I did because I would never intentionally take anything to my home or right. to any of my friends. Right. Although we're not, I'm not really seeing, you know, I'm doing my best to to not see anybody. But it still, it was, I thought it was incredibly. So the number one lesson that we learned from this is you should never have volunteered to help some guy move furniture when you're supposed to be staying at home. Yes. Okay. It's, get that done and then number two now that you understand what the covid virus is you have a better idea of exactly what to do i mean taking your clothes off was perfect confining those clothes to a, a bag until you could wash them perfect um washing the, your clothes the way you did perfect um the bath and the and suds and all that and warmth okay I will tell you that the one thing that we do know that the words you want to live by with this virus is dehumidify. Okay. It hates dry. It hates warm. It hates bright and it hates ventilated. So we do everything the other way. Open windows and doors in your home. Get everything as bright as you can possibly get it. Keep warm and keep your house warm. Keep everything dry and dehumidify wet, moist places. And we're, we're going to be good. And we're, gonna, and we're going to take this seriously. And we're going to stay home and we're not going to let somebody talk us into doing things yes. that aren't good. Because here you knew this guy really well. Yeah, And I will never assume that somebody does not have it or has not been in contact. From now on, before I go anywhere or see anybody, I will ask them directly. Well, I know this person and I've always liked them, but I'm just shocked that that they would do that and that they would say that to you, whether, you know, right or wrong, it's just shocking, just shocking. Yeah. Anyway, um, mine, yes, mine was a, a lot less, um, a lot less scary, but I was going through my um, garden, taking my dogs for a walk and I overhear my daughter who lives in New York City, who has been down here now for 13 days. So one more day and she could, um, you know, she's home free to leave the house, even though no reason for her to do that. Um, but 14 days, if you've been in New York, you should quarantine yourself anywhere you go. Um, but uh, I, I hear her and she's on the phone with her employer and he's telling her that he really needs her to come back to work. And that he'll come down here and pick her up. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just like, I was absolutely dumbfounded that she was having the conversation. Who would willingly go to if, New York? If you knew that you were safe, you knew you were home, why would you willingly return to any job in New York unless you were a doctor or a nurse? What could you be doing? They do not need actresses, nannies, and tutors back in New York during this. But I was shocked that my daughter was entertaining the idea. I was shocked. She obviously does not get it. Um, and I do think it's good to put in perspective that it was 27 days ago when the very first case of COVID-19 was diagnosed right. in New York State. 27 days ago. That's it. It feels like we've been doing this for a really, really long does. time. And it was 10 days ago that they shut the first schools. 10 I, days, that's all it's been. Yeah, I will say in your daughter's defense that I don't think it, I thought it was as real as I do now. After being in a car with somebody that says they had it, it just made it all so much more real and so yeah. much more possible. Whereas before I thought, yeah. well, I'm not going anyplace, I'm avoiding people, I'm washing my hands, I know the soap and lather thing, I know that, uh, that soap is the best uh, treatment, but it didn't hit home until somebody looked at me and said, well, I've had it, that I realized we could be close to 
somebody anywhere I know. that could have been exposed. And but and when it's right on you, it's panicking. It, I mean, you panic because you don't want to hurt somebody that you love and you don't want to hurt someone that you're around. It seems very distant when we're just talking about or watching it on TV. Yes. It just doesn't seem like it's the same. Um, but I think in Maryland, we're very lucky. Oh, yes. We have so few cases compared to other states. We yeah. have to listen to what Governor Hogan says. I think he's doing his very, very best. And for me to put myself in that situation is one thing, but to have to go home to my family. Yeah. I really go. So everybody, the rules are the rules. Stick to the rules. They're all for our benefit. Not, I mean, everybody knows it now. Um, child care. Um, the, uh, a lot of people are that are first responders and people that are working um, need child care. So just um, if... If you're one of those people, Kids Revolution in Cockeysville, the YMCA in Towson, uh, Little Feet Preschool, Celebri, and Epworth at the Methodist, Methodist Church in Cockeysville are all um, taking care of first responder children. So you can call any of those places if you need that. A um, lot of ads um, on um, social media around here for people who are willing to do babysitting please know that bringing anyone into your house, you know, is it's not the time. So um, sometimes you have to, sometimes you actually have to, but you want to make very, very certain that um, just being stir crazy with your kids is not reason enough. If you must have someone look after your children, that's something completely different. All a decision that we make. Um, okay, Joe, um, you're going to help us come up with something really fun here. So now we're going to kind of shift to, you know, how we're living our lives and what we're doing. Have you cooked anything or done anything recently that you thought was really good? I'm working on my scones, trying different kinds of fruit in them. Okay. Some bread, working yes. on that. Okay. And uh, cocktails. Because you know, flour is now back, you know, in all the stores. Yes. So you can get flour again. You can get sugar. Um, I made a whole variety of things with phyllo dough. I became like... Really? I, I opened my freezer and I had phyllo dough because apparently I go to the store and every time I see it, I go, oh, yeah, you should always have some of that. And so I buy it and I take it home and then I, I forget that there's already four boxes and then there's five boxes and whatever. So I did um, fig preserves and mascarpone cheese in that like little turnovers really for breakfast um, one day. I think I'm eating better now than I ever have before the virus thing. Um, and I also did a, um, a chopped mushrooms, celery, onions, um, and some herbs and mm. feta goat cheese. Ooh. And I put those in phyllo dough. That sounds very good. They were a little dry, but um, more than made up for it with the, um, with the fig and mascarpone. They, they were like fabulous. Okay, so Joe has been um, raving on the phone. We talk every day. Uh, we, we can't work, of course, um, unless we have to ship something out. And by the way, thank you to people who have been buying from us on Etsy and Cherish. Um, we really do appreciate it. And um, we do um, have curbside outside, as does Backwater Angler. I noticed today they have curbside pickups. So um, fishing right now is a, a great escape and a wonderful sport yes. to be involved in. So if you do need something, the Backwater Angler is... You can call them, order something, and they will put it outside um, on a table that they they keep clean all the time, and uh, you can just pick it up. All right. So, uh, so Joe and I talk every day, and every day she tells me that she is working on this cocktail that she likes, and so I'm just going to turn this over to you, move my six feet away from you, and have you show us how you do it. Okay. So it's an orange crush, and everybody's heard of them, but I found my favorite way to make them, and that is... Uh, one orange that you squeeze and that's going to equal about three ounces of fresh juice. That goes in the bottom of a glass. I've got the juice of an orange in here. It doesn't look like very much. And then some of the peel that has some uh, flesh. flesh left on it. I'll cut that up into little slices. Okay. And put this in the cup and muddle that because you want 
the aroma and the, the, the juice, the oil from the orange, has got a really strong flavor. So you want that to be in your cocktail. That's oh, important. I would never have thought that. Okay, cool. Okay. Then, two ounces of a vodka, orange-flavored vodka. It can be any kind. Today we're using... Smirnoff Orange from Troyer's, who is also doing curbside and delivery now. Um, and Smirnoff is probably the least expensive um, of the orange vodkas because I'm cheap. Okay, so two ounces of that and then some type of an orange liqueur. So it can be Grand Marnier, it can be Cointreau. I ran out of Cointreau the second night. So now we're on the triple sec, which also works really I'm well. cheap. So it's two to one. Two to one. So we have three ounces. I think I spilled a little bit there. We have three ounces of fresh squeezed orange juice, two ounces of vodka, one ounce of triple sec. Then if you want to, you can put in uh, some lemon lime soda or ginger ale or something like that if you want a little sparkle. But I just put in ice. And I have a tendency to use a lot of ice. Stir. And I'll let you taste it. Well, I'm gonna get a glass. Here. Oh, you want it? Not yeah, I'm gonna get a glass. glass. Okay. What is this? Pour this in here. You need a strainer? So you take it with uh, everything in it. Everything in it. All right. Yeah. Can I have a few more ice cubes? Yes. Please. And do you garnish it a certain way? Like would mint be you good? You could or? put mint. Mint would be great. But I, didn't, I don't have any mint right now. I don't have any fresh mint. Uh, yeah, right. So. Where's yours? Mine's right here. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I needed it to start with. Oh, that is good. Isn't it good? And the funny thing is I would not... I would not have guessed that that's the way it tastes. It really is the skin of the orange that does it. It does. It, it gives makes it that a big little bite. Difference. Yeah, it puts yeah. a little bite in there. And after you've had one or two, then you can switch to um, bottled orange juice because you don't want to spend the time in the kitchen making, squeezing the oranges. And then when you run out of ice, you can start using the orange <laughs> concentrate. Just pour the alcohol over the orange concentrate. Oh, you'll be fine. That's going to be a summer drink, orange slushes. Well, that's an orange slush. Yes. Because you freeze it, but it doesn't really freeze, so it's kind of like a snow cone. I, who was a bartender, know nothing of these things. Okay, so here are our movies. Take half of those. Um, we've got new movies outside 107 Mount Carmel Road. We've got Firewall, No Looking Back, The Gift, Dancing at Luminasa, and Cellular. And I have What Happens in Vegas, Crash. Uh, Duplicity with Clive Owen, so that's a favorite of mine. Serious? No, it's not serious. Oh, Completely Serious with Daniel Tosh. Wanted with Angelina Jolie and The Forgotten. All look good to me. Yeah, so for anybody that is not hooked into your Netflix or your one of those things, these things are now outside. I believe there's some um, books. We have some gardening books going out there as well today, so um, please, the Lending Library, um, we, we would love it if you would use it. Um, wow, that was a lot. What else do we have to get to? Um, somebody asked before about little black spots on the leaves of the hydrangea. That's right. The gardening segment. Yeah. Completely forgot about it. That's what happens when you have this. By the way, check out Moms um, of the Hereford Zone for moms that are home with kids. Um, it's a new um, page that's really, really good. has great stuff in it. So, Joe, yes. somebody wrote in, and they asked about their um, hydrangeas, which you've now become the hydrangea queen. Everybody asks about your hydrangeas on YouTube. Um, they said that they do not have black spots on the southern part or the eastern west of their house. But on the north of their house, as people have apparently a lot of hydrangeas, um, they have black spots. Which is a fungus, and it... Uh is in the ground and it will come up to the leaves when it's really moist or when it rains and it splashes off of the ground so and it does spread from leaf to leaf so the important things to remember are clean up all the leaves and debris underneath your hydrangeas in the spring in the fall if you leave it 
if you leave that debris under the hive granules all winter, they're more likely to be infected in the spring because the infection will start before you clean up. So get out there during the winter or whenever you can and clean up. If you see it, it'll start on the lower leaves because it's coming up from the ground when it's raining or when it's moist. Pull those leaves off and dispose of them so that that fungus can't travel around the yard. And uh, dispose of those well. And you so if you see a leaf with the black on it, do you cut it off? I would cut it off. Or sometimes I'll just grab it in my hand, cover up the black spot, break it off, and put it in a bag. I'm not going to put it on the lawn because then it that gets fungus back in the can ground. spread. Yeah. yeah. So, but I have a tendency to just cover it and break it. Also, when you're pruning, you should take your shears and absolutely clean them in between each plant. But if you see a lot of this fungus on uh, your plants and you're pruning them, go ahead and wipe them off with alcohol wipes. Just keep, I'll actually keep a, a baggie with a washcloth that's got some alcohol in it. Mm -hmm. And just put my pruners and, and wipe them off, you know, fairly often if I don't want that disease to spread. So it does spread a lot. And what happens if when the when the plant gets that disease? Does it die? I mean, can it die? Very seldom would it would it die. And it, it's obviously more prevalent on the north side, possibly the east side, where there's less sun and it's going to be more humid. Um, you can thin out your plants so there's better air circulation to keep the rate of the infection down. But cleaning up the debris on the ground is the most important. And most of us let it sit there all winter because we've kind of lost interest in our gardens. We're tired of it, and so we let it sit there, and that fungus grows in that area, and then as soon as it gets warm and the plant starts to grow, it's growing up through that fungus. It rains in the springtime. You know, the fungus, the raindrops bounce off the ground, the fungus is up in the leaves, and you've kind of lost before you've even started. So try, yeah. and, try and clean up in the fall All or right. over the winter. Now, is that the same uh, fungus that gets on rhododendron? No, it's a completely different fungus, and, and that spot can be a couple of different things. There's a couple of different black spots, but they all they're all funguses. They all transfer the same way, um, but it is not the same that gets on hydrangeas. I think you're talking about a like a sooty look on your yeah. hydrangea leaves. Yeah. Chance yeah, no, I'm on my rhododendron. On your rhododendron, that yeah. sooty look is a different problem. And it's usually an indication that you have a lot of aphids, and what you're, that sooty is really the frass or the excrement from the insects. I knew you were going to say poop, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll talk about that a different day and how to treat it. Aphid poop. Awesome. Okay. So I love the one that you told. So tell that one. All right. So we have two little funny things that um, we're going to throw in here. Um, one is that um, Joe's husband has come up with a name for our show because she's Deborah Joe and I'm Deborah Dean that um, he thinks it, it should be called Two Deborahs Too Much. <laughs> Dude, he is funny. Thank you, Russ. And um, <laughs> the second one was a good joke that I saw on um, online, which was the person that said, um, they say that um, a mask and a pair of gloves is all you need to go to the grocery store in safety. But when I got there, people still had clothes on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that Joe and I always talk about are local businesses. And um, this pandemic, of course, is affecting us very seriously. Um, we read the other day, it was very, very sad that Kirschmeyer Chocolates um, has decided that they're going to close after 32 years um, because most of their business for the year is done at Easter and without um, the Easter business and their landlord wants a new lease and all that kind of stuff that goes on in business oh um, that they've actually decided that they won't make it past this. Um, they are open for orders and they are actively filling orders um, for Easter. And I do think it would be great if we could all give them, you know, if they're going to close, let's give them the send off of a lifetime and um, get your chocolates um, through Kirschmeyer. Joe, how do we reach them? Um, they are at 2120 Deer Co. Road in Timonium. And but they have a website? They have a website. Their phone number is 410-561-7705. And they do? They have, I know they have curbside they pickup. Have website. It's K-I-R-C-H-M-A-Y-R Chocolatier. 
right in, in Lutherville. And they've been in this area for 32 years. And this is, this, this is gonna be hard. Um, it's hard for businesses like this. And there's another business, um, the White House Nurseries that are out here uh, at Mount Carmel. Um, and what's the road that goes through? Uh, Falls. Falls. So Mount Carmel and Falls, a great nursery. Um, yeah. All the churches, which will not be open um, for Easter. Right. So all the lilies and the plants that, of course, they had in the ground and um, those seeds were already started and everything a long time ago. And those beautiful, beautiful plants are, they're ready to go. And there isn't, a, the, yeah, the bulk buyers for those things will not be open. So um, I was thinking that had anybody done something good for you? Uh, let's say the people that work behind the counter at Growl's or at the pharmacy or any of the restaurants that are staying open to get us fed. And, you know, by the way, do understand these restaurants are not in profit. If they are not selling alcohol and they are not doing their normal numbers, they are not in profit. So they are staying open to survive. Um, and of course we want White House Nursery to yes. do that too. Those lilies, when they're up and gone, they're, they're gone. So um, you can buy them and they're offering them at great prices. So um, you, can, you can call ahead and they will bring it out to your car. If someone's done you a good turn or a business has done a good turn, or even if we just all want to put a lily outside our house on Easter day, just to say we are all one community. Let's do it. And they, they're they weeks. They bloom for a long, long time. Lots yeah. of enjoyment. They're yeah. worth having. Great. That's wonderful. And if you plant them, can they come back? or Probably not. Probably. So these are like poinsettias. You know, you, once they're gone, they're gone? They're kind of gone. You, yeah. I mean, I would certainly I'd never discourage anybody from trying, but most of them have been forced to grow in a greenhouse environment and are not going to make it outside. Oh. But you're, in the meantime, you're going to have weeks and weeks of enjoyment for something that you pay a few dollars. You'll get lots more time enjoying that flower than you would going to the movies yeah. or you know something else. So plants are always a good investment. Okay, all right, that's great. And also, Joe and I are big supporters of bonuses and hazardous duty pay for anybody who is putting their neck on the line here. So if you are, if you're a nurse or you're a doctor and you're out there doing this stuff, we really think that you ought to be paid commensurately with um, what your family is enduring right now and everything else. And let's hope that if a, enough of us write letters to the governor and to whatever, that some part of this money that has been voted on by Congress can go to bonuses for these nurses, um, they really just an unbelievable hours. Yes. The nurses' aides, unbelievable hours. Young kids who are going to work every single day, reusing masks, um, trying to you know protect themselves as best they can, never never shying away from you know anything that's going wrong. Those people really really deserve our support. And, our and thanks, yeah. yeah, and I and thank you to all the people, especially in the grocery stores. And the liquor stores and those essential businesses that um, that put themselves out there with the public every single day, and um, and do it with a smile, and are supportive, and they're just great neighbors. They're great neighbors, and the fact that they go to work every day um, and put themselves at some risk, um, I just think that we should support them in every possible way. I mean, it would not bother me if they put up tip jars. In the grocery stores in the checkout lines because I just can't I couldn't do enough for somebody that 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 put themselves out there like that for me so uh, thank you thank you thank very you. much thank you from the bottom of our hearts for everything that you guys are doing